Well, my friends, I've made it up to Michigan and it kind of feels a little bit like deja vu. I was just in Carolina with you, Dan. And That's right. I see a lot of similarities, but I'm excited to see some of the differences that might be here as well as we walk around and showcase this location here in Michigan. Absolutely. Welcome back. Thank and, you, sir. Uh, I appreciate we, that. We do, we do it again. So, uh, yeah, welcome to uh, Port Huron, our Port Huron location. Uh, it's We've been in uh, the United States for since 1977, so 47 years we've been running this uh, this country trying to make it grow. So that's a pretty, I think that's pretty substantial. Absolutely. Um, and, and here you'll see that uh, we, we do focus on PCD and solid carbide, but we also do something extra here that we for sure don't do in South Carolina. And it's something that I think is uh, a little unique, you know, so I'd like to, Show you around a little bit. Let's do it. See I'm how ready, it goes. Yeah, I'm ready to take a walk. If we stand here, we're going to be here all day. I know. Let's and don't walk. worry, we have enough talking uh, points that we could probably stay in there all day and make a good video. Yeah, nobody want to watch it. I think here. the audience wants to see what's going <laughs> yeah, on absolutely. here. Absolutely. So you mentioned some of the similarities of Carolina. Yeah. What are some of the differences as well? Some of the differences are one of the differences, this is a UAW facility. So we partner with the UAW here. Uh, and you, you can see. One of the most important things, we, we grind tools to microns, right? I mean, we don't we don't play around, it's microns. 40%, I think it was 40% of all the tools we do are within 10. Most of them in that range get down into the four micron range. So incredible. You, you can't just get that grinder off the street, right? So having a stable workforce is vital for here. And uh, and we have that here working with the UAW. So I, it's, it's a good partnership. So play a game with me real quick. What does UAW stand for? United Auto Workers. There we go, United Auto Workers. And how do you find the people to be able to work on such precise components all the time? And let's be fair, almost every product that comes through here feels like it was probably new out of someone's invention in their mind because you guys are so flexible in doing specialized work for people. How do you even find people to support that? Well, you build them, right? <laughs> and they will come? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you, you mean, just to get it off the street, you're not going to get that. You, you, you hire somebody that's got the technology or the technological background, and then you train. We like to try it from the ground up. Our company uh, in Germany, we run 300 apprentices all the time. And, uh, and here we like to build from the ground up as well. So you know, I'm going to bring this back up again because I know you want to talk about some of the areas in this section, but don't let me forget to bring up the apprenticeship program in Germany again, because I know you do a co-op here, yep. but the Germans do such a wonderful job. And maybe we could take a minute or two during this walk and talk to inspire a few folks out there to create their own co-ops or apprenticeships here, because we are sitting in a labor shortage skills gap. This is yeah, something absolutely. we talk about all the time. So maybe we can share some of what you're doing internally, but I know this section is an area that you want to focus on as well. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we, uh, when we design tools, we design them when with balance, right? So we, we, in as the design of the tool, it's balanced to it as far as it can be. Uh, but we always do on PCD tools, a final balancing, up to 33,000 RPMs. Um, probably uh, the average is somewhere around 8,000, I would say, for every tool that comes through. But every tool comes out of here balanced and ready to go to uh, manufacture good parts, protect your spindle, and uh, and be as productive as possible. Well, I see you're using a Heimer balancer. Yes, sir. Um, and I got to hang out with Brent not too long ago. You know yep. that young man? Yeah. Uh, uh, Yes. Wait, I trick you when I say young. Sorry, yeah. Brad. Well, we do love you, but I, you see him stutter when I say young man. So sorry about that little giggle. But I got to hang out with them not too long ago. Yeah. And I said, and he said, what happens when something is unbalanced? And he gave me a, a wheel yep. and put a piece of magnet on the wheel closer to the center and fold it further apart. Right. And when it was further apart and it was in balance, I was shaking like this, trying to hold on to that thing. It. And when he put it toward the center, obviously less vibration. That's exactly what happens to people's machines, to people's tools, to people's materials. Materials, it all gets to everything. I mean, how important is balance to you? It, 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 it's when the higher your speeds go up, the more vital that becomes. But right? you said thirty-three thousand. I think we, that's what we can do. Yes, the, that's the what test. we can get it up to. Yeah, you don't you don't have to spin at thirty-three thousand to balance at thirty-three thousand. It'd take a little bit heavier. Fun if you did, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be fun if you did, but you don't have to. Um, but that's the capabilities that we have here, and and in general, that's plenty to to have. You so. mentioned also, and I've said this once, and I think bringing it back up is important because 
is something that you guys focus on at Maple, and that's, mm -hmm. you mentioned four micron. Four micron, do you know that if you change the temperature in this room by one degree, it's shifting by a micron? Yes. Four micron is so precise, yes. and you have, what, thousands, tens of thousands of products that you go through, Dan? Yeah, How are you able that to do mean. that? How are you able to, to really make that that leading industry product that people rely on day in and day out for all the industries across the board and, and truly be that name. I yeah. mean, you said 1977. We started in the United States in 1977. I mean, we started in 1950 in, oh. in Germany, right? So, uh, but it, it all stems from the very beginning of the process. You have to have the process go all the way through and, and quality control step by step by step is vital because you don't want to try to hold four microns get to the very end and then not be holding what you're trying to because that'd be a problem there's, there's a little bit of money involved in that part right for sure so and you know it's 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 nice to be charitable but it's nice to make money when you're in business <laughs> i do like being charitable as well yeah, but yeah. you're right about the business side of things so what else is different about this facility is i'm starting to recognize a few more grinding machines that were noticeable yep. when we were in carolina yeah the layout is the layout here is different it's a different building right it's been around a little bit more we do the pcd on that on that side and we have the solid carbide over here and the process goes through um the the Real, there is no difference in the programs. There is no difference in the machines. There is no difference in the coolant, in the grinding wheels, the wheel packs. Rinse and repeat. It's it's the it's the standardization. It's set up from the center of competence in Germany to make this specific type of tool here, and and that's what we do, right? I mean, it, look, what do we do that's different every day? Our batch sizes are small. We talked about it last time, three to five. What other people think are crazy special that's what we do here every day so well you are crazy special yeah yeah i, I know <laughs> i've been told <laughs> so i've been told why this location and we've been in north carolina yep. right we yep. have this location but there's yep. another location as well i believe right yeah well let's but go. why here so it started in new jersey it came here because our company our business and our company was built up with the automotive industry right so makes all the sense yeah, in the world. So, so you come here. It was a company called Aero Carbide that we bought uh, this location, and then grew it from there. It was a small carbide shop, uh, really pretty good one, well known locally. Um, but bought that and and then expanded it from there, so that we could be closer to the customer, um, get get repairs or or we call them repairs, but retips or regrinds in and out in a in a timely manner, and make sure everybody has a stable productive process that's the goal stable productive process i like that i hope we're doing that in this tour as well for everyone watching stable productive process okay we're going to continue walking and speaking of being able to support your customers especially in the automotive world where yes, we sir. are in michigan there's an area coming up just to my yep. right and the camera people's left where you do repairs but some of the most difficult repairs with moving parts that most people would either scrap not attempt buy new whatever it might be but you want to support your people locally don't you yeah it's a, i mean it's a these are i mean you talk about special tools and then there's special tools right uh these actuated tools uh, we have a facility in Germany. That's our headquarters, or that's the headquarters and the center of competence to manufacture them. What we do here is local uh, maintenance and repair, and it's vital to have that because you know these are very expensive tools. Not everybody buys uh, one, two, or they buy one and they should have bought three. So when they go down, they go down, and sending it back to Germany timing doesn't really doesn't really match so about 75 percent of everything that comes in uh we can repair right here and uh, get it back to the customer in in a matter of uh you know six weeks rather than you know 16 weeks you know as we close out this tour and you mentioned should buy two or three instead of just one we mentioned the time frame yeah how many times have you and i been blue in the face where we say I would highly recommend to you and advise you to make the investment now in said product. Yeah. And then something like this happens. And yes, you're quick on repairs. You turn around time. That's why you're doing it locally. You're one of the few people that would even consider doing it to right. begin with, but you're doing it. But on top of that, 
why can't they just buy a second one? I get that there's price up front, but the price on the back end, the back that end. hurts so much more than that price on the front yeah. end. I promise you. Yep. And that's part of the conversation we have all the time, it's, isn't it? But it, it's a conversation we're going to continue to have. It is. I mean, there, there's budgets, there's reason for budgets, right? And uh, sometimes things just don't fit in it. And that's where, if we're going to support our customers, we have to be a bit flexible on the back end of it to say, okay, I understand your situation. Now, how can we help get what you need so that you're up and running again as soon as possible? This is not your first day on the job, my friend. That was very well explained, <laughs> that last part right there. I mean, because you're right. We, we will not stop having that conversation. Nope, there are never. budgets. There are restrictions. Yep. How can we support you based on these set of circumstances, yep. right? Really, yep. really well described. So we've walked through the majority of the shop. We haven't dove inside of machines, but through the oh. majority of the shop, there are some similarities and some differences to Carolina. Are there anything you'd like to offer the audience to summarize this location other than the local automotive side of things? Summarize this location and yeah. what it does to support the folks out there. Sure, uh, so this location, like I said, has been around for a while. Started in the 19 and the 80s at, at this site here specifically. Uh, we partner with the UAW. These guys have been doing these tools for a long time. So it's not that we have people on the job just starting, although we do have people co-oping and coming up through the process. So uh, we're here to, to support the customers. We listen to your needs and, uh, and do our very best to satisfy the needs of the customer. So that's it. Yeah, very well said, Dan, Thanks. appreciate you. We never did come back around to that whole co-op apprenticeship program. However, if you pay attention to the videos that are coming out, we did yeah. one specifically on that, where you'll get to meet a few of my friends who are going through the program, who are coaches in the program, and even human resources who supports the beginning to now. So a video you definitely wanna see that touches on that very, very important subject. If you're reaching out for someone, if you're looking for someone to help you in that really complicated, maybe somewhat impossible, so you think with quotation marks, impossible parts, Reach out to me, Paul. Reach out to yes. Dan. These folks are doing things I've never seen before. And one-offs, two-offs, five-offs. Their weird and unusual is their normal. Our weird and unusual is their normal. So reach out We're anytime. We're just weird and unusual. <laughs> that is definitely true. <laughs> so if you're reaching out, if you're finding something to be a big issue, give these guys a call. They might be able to fix it for you. And based on what I'm seeing, there's a high percentage chance they're going to be able to fix it for you. Thank you all for joining Dan and I on this tour. One Thank more time. You. One Appreciate more time. you so much. How many times did you say absolutely? Did you I get don't the think I under? said it. I said it under. I said it under. We got under the absolutely that we were promised as there well. So whoever owns us money, uh, <laughs> we'll take it. You'll take it. <laughs>